I'm on to putting up my plastic vapor barrier. Made sure all the insulation was filled in and fluffy. And all the wiring was roughed in. So I could start on this wall. I have to do this a section at a time so I could move things around and whatever to get on that side. So on these uh, outlet boxes you could just cut the vapor barrier just slightly smaller than the box and then just kind of stretch it around there and just kind of tape it so it seals that up. Same with any other little wire sticking out like that. This is going to go to the bathroom. Got most of it on there. I reached my goal though. I just had to tape up all the seams there. It should be good. This is going pretty quick, so... Getting it all taped up now. I did get this whole roll for 10 bucks. And I think this is just used for like some other construction stuff. So it's not really made for like what I'm doing it for, but... Um, it was 10 bucks and I just thought, well, it's going to cover everything plus some. Just kind of have to look around for those types of seeing what it can do rather than what it's designed to do. Plus, I was actually hoping to get this favorite barrier in a black color because when I put my rustic barn wood on there, there's going to be slight gaps and whatever. So there won't be any, you won't be able to see through it as well. So I've been starting to put up the barn wood in little planks trying to put it together like a puzzle, make the pieces fit where they can. And I'm working my way through that and I got all the vapor barrier up, barrier up and all and all of it taped. Working now on the bathroom wall area and this is going to just be a thin wall. It's not going to be a regular thick uh, putting the studs there. Basically I had to get kind of creative with this but the studs are going to be there like this instead of like this making a whole new wall so it'll, it'll provide for more room it doesn't have to be a uh, weight bearing wall although it will bear some weight you know it'll kind of support it but although it doesn't need to and I had to get kind of creative so I'm going to use these uh, trusses as kind of like the the ceiling uh, for the bathroom so it'll be just kind of in this little area so it'll make more sense when I get working on it. Alright this is what I was talking about a little more clear this time so you can see where I put a little space for the door I'll have to customize the door but it won't be that hard I mean it's just kind of uh, take a piece of wood and put it in there um, I used one of my poles that I used in my tiny house shed and this will be exposed and then these other boards will be behind a wall. For the bottom plate I just basically took a piece of wood that was left from my old house and it was uh, split in half from a 2x4 and I just used that on both of these bottom plates. I thought that would be, it worked fine trying to get this barn wood up. It's, a, it's just like a puzzle. It's a work of art and I got another pile of barn wood for 20 bucks for that pile. So I'll have to make it all work. I'm trying to th figure out the ceiling. So that's my next challenge. Insulation, all that stuff. I started putting this other wood up. A little bit over here as well. Now I have to explain a little bit about this. Uh, using this wood I had to be creative about it with the different types because I had this random planks and then I had this tongue and groove old side siding so I didn't want it to be too random and because I didn't have enough for you know all of it for either one so I I kinda chose this area as like the living room area so I 
prioritized all the tongue and groove stuff over here and then I'll have enough for over here as well so this will be kind of like the living living room type section and this will be kind of like a a bunk bed type section over here so it'll it'll be kind of looking like it's uh, in, intended on that uh, I just didn't want it to be just random boards like that mixed in with this and I, I probably could do that but I already have that up and so that's just kind of the re creative stuff I have to figure out make decisions on and I even have enough of this tongue and groove stuff to go over into the bathroom area so that'll work and I'm only gonna go this far down and I did this in my tiny house shed back there did the same thing and I'm gonna do a Wayne's cotting section from here down so I'll have enough wood to at least get that far and then I'll have to figure out some like rusty tin galvanized steel down there or something but I'm glad I was able to at least get that far and that was next to nothing I mean I paid 20 bucks for all the tongue and groove stuff but I didn't pay anything for the, all the other things and I found a found more free wood online you just have to keep looking every day just somebody's getting rid of a fence or something or something has been online for so long just like this stuff and then suddenly people are willing to let it go for less let me just keep an eye open for it so I'm still trying to figure out the roof stuff I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to work with uh, the rustic type of style and barn wood and you can't really go wrong with it all it is is the you know just rough rough edges and and putting on stain to make it all uniform and then putting polyurethane over it and that's pretty much it and it looks really good um, this is a, this is an example that I'm talking about where I'm cutting out a notch and then this part looked really just had a corner on it it didn't didn't look very natural so I just uh, cut it where I wanted it and you just take a hammer and just kind of impact the corners and so that eliminates the need to sand anything down and you get a nice little rounded uh, worn look as if it was just like that before so and then the next step is just get some light stain or something so it blends in and then polyurethane on top and it'll look like it just is one uh, like it was like that before so it's and you could take that and apply it pretty much to any barn wood so when you cut it you just kind of pound it down impact it and then stain and polyurethane it and that's it so it's super easy to work with and even these cracks and whatever that I have on there I'm just using it and I could just even if I didn't want to put stain on it and just re retain that uh, the color and everything I just I don't I don't stain it I just put the polyurethane over right on top of that and it just gives it a finished look uh, even over those rotten parts it's just super fun to work with so here's that piece I was showing you that installed I had to make some room for the plug outlet here um, so I had to cut that off round it off there and I have all these panels in there so far here's another example if you have this cut edge right here and you didn't want to put any trim over that you just take your take your hammer and just impact the edges just like I was showing you and it'll just have that rounded off look and then just maybe put a little stain over that or or it might look just fine as it is 
And so I, I might, um, I might just do that on this part. Give it that transition look. Same over here on this window sill. So I'll just, I could put some trim there. lightly doing that but you can kind of see what I'm talking about so I have a nice rounded off and kind of stain it something on this side it saves a lot of time and it looks good so here's kind of a overall picture um, that side and this side. So you kind of see the where I'm going with it. I did use the these shingle nails. I've had I had a ton of these for my step grandpa's uh, old project stuff. A lot of these shingle nails are pretty short. They they have enough for it to go in there and I kind of like that because if I need to take these panels off it's not incredibly difficult but it still holds it in pretty good and then there are um, other parts where there's barn wood is like warped and sticking out and these nails these shorter nails weren't doing very much so I just got these longer nails for those strategic places where it's standing out so I have more of a grab so I have this old farmhouse door that I was gonna I'm gonna try to use it uh, it's just not quite wide enough for my frame but I might move it over I just really want to use it because it just blends in so well so I'm gonna try to figure out how to make it work and I might even use this old ladder that that was my dad's for like a stairs might take off that part of it I use that part of it as stairs for the loft area. So as I'm working, I just keep in mind little things like this this paint on this pole and the old farm wood door and some of the barn wood paint. So I'm just thinking about that as I go, is kind of um, putting that together so it's in, it looks intentional and I don't have to like try to sand this down and get rid of the paint or anything so it kind of has this transition into the stuff that's already on it one of the things on my list to do is get all rid of this wood um, I just put it there as I was throwing it on it kind of piled up on me over time but um, I guess I realized the hard way is that varmints and bugs love you know replicating in that and it kind of gets bugs all over my house and stuff so I'm getting it all into a different place and there's a lot more than I realized that was there and a lot more space so we'll see what we do with this space I'm starting to clean this out so I can concentrate on the roof this has been one of the projects that I've been really kind of dreading and I've had to really research on what to do with roofs and insulating and vapor barrier and ventilation all that stuff and I've had to make my own decision on this and so I'm going to try to explain this uh, because there's a lot of information about how to insulate a roof and I'm going to violate some of the rules because I have some other plans in the future to kind of make it a different set up here with insulation so on my tiny house shed back there um I'll, i could try to find some pictures of snapshots of what i did with the metal uh sheeting on the on the sides the paneling and i i put like a, a one by two strip of wood and and did the sheeting on top of that so there was a, about an inch gap of air 
So what that does is kind of act as a heat shield and I and I've seen some people do that with roofs when they put a metal roof on top. They just basically put some ribs or some, you know, a a one by two or one by four screw in the the metal sheeting on top of that. That does wonders about keeping the heat out. And in my shed it's a it's always ten degrees cooler in there. It just keeps the from the heat conductivity, it just prevents all that. And uh, especially if there's a little bit of airflow through that, um, between that air gap, that one inch air gap, it, it just makes all the difference. And they have that concept with like military tents and stuff like that. And it just, it's basically putting your roof in the shade, but it just, you know, it's just a way of doing it. So it's attached to the building itself. With that in mind, I don't have to do a lot of the ventilations that um, I would normally have to do with insulation. A lot of times you'd have to get at least you know, a baffling or something or just so there's a, a gap between the uh, the roof decking and the insulation so that there's some airflow in between there to to keep it cool up there. And since I'm already going to do that on the outside then I won't necessarily have to do it on the inside in here. So it'll, the roof will be a lot cooler that way actually. And I won't need as much insulation because normally a roof would need about, I think, uh, 30, you know, I don't know, 30, uh, R 30, I think. And I don't, I don't need to do that since I'm going to do the the inch gap outside. I made a decision that I'm just going to go ahead and put my, and this is R19. So it'll be just like I did the walls. And then I've got some, uh, sheet rock. I'm going to put over that. And, uh, I got some help today. Brenton from backwaters back roads is helping me. I'm on a time crunch. I wanted to get this done before it started getting cold. And this is the one project that was, that was hindering me from getting anywhere. So a lot of research and a lot of setting up the shop basically so I can process this this uh, insulation and just knock it out and get it done. So hopefully that made sense, but I thought it was important enough to explain the roof because it took a lot of research to figure that out. All right, we're making slow but steady progress. We had to kind of go through a learning curve and we're still kind of going through the learning curve, but. Uh, we tried a couple methods of trying to get the batting up there to hold it up. We used a little bit of string at first and then I just started stapling a little bit on the each end to keep it up there long enough until I got the vapor barrier stapled up. So you can kind of see where I went with that. Then it gets easier as I just kind of go along. And I think the rest of the way it'll just kind of, this vapor barrier will just kind of hold it up as I go. So, one of the things I had to do is take off these top panels again and I knew I had to do that so that this vapor barrier has a continuous uh, connection. I'll tape this. That's one thing I, this guy was talking about. He said that a lot of people don't they just leave it like that so there's a gap but that lets moisture in through there so that's I was just remembering to do that <coughs> and and I'm just using these old they're they're like construction trash bags that's why it says danger whatever contains asbestos it's not the trash bags itself but but these are really thick trash bags and they'll work really well for that. All right, this is the next day. Believe it or not, this just half of this took the full day yesterday. Just it's just all the figuring out how to do this. It started out with the the challenge of uh, keeping the insulation up there while you staple everything else on, and I just got it into a method of putting a string up there first and then trying to hold it in but the string wasn't really strong enough or holding it up so I just 
ended up uh, taking a bit of the insulation and just pinching it and stapling it in just to keep it up long enough until I can get the uh, vapor barrier stapled in. And then as I worked up with the staples on the vapor barrier, I just used the used that as holding up the insulation as I stuffed it up there. And that's where I'm at now. So I just stuff in the insulation then staple. So once I get it started, it was kind of got on a roll. This glass fiberglass insulation is nasty to work with. I I can't express that enough. It's just so miserable. Brenton's help was very, very helpful. And uh, so we also I also use these boards just kind of hold up the insulation as I worked on it. So that was another little strategy. So I'll just give you a quick scan of the cleanup here. Brenton really organized this place. And uh, I was glad to get the wood over there because it was just a home to a lot of bugs. And um, just getting this all cleared out. So now I could actually concentrate on uh, getting some siding on there if I wanted. So that was a huge, huge help. Helped me sleep it at night last night. <laughs> In reality, these are the things that pile up and uh, you can't really get to it because you're just concentrating on one project at a time. And uh, essentially this whole place is a construction site. And I have to put things in as I work on it. So it's a big project continually going on. And then things start collecting and I, I can't get to it all. And I intend on getting to it, but it's just there's just no way I don't have the time. One of the things I'm learning is just you just gotta do the best you can. And someone offers to help, and they do that much. That's an incredible blessing. So I could take a closer look at this foundation on the outside of this garage. This is the part where I was pouring in the concrete mix. It's nice and hard now but it was kind of falling through but I wanted to make sure that was filled so no uh, mice or anything get in there. I could break these off if I wanted to. Same with over on this corner. So I had to work with you know what I had. There was a crack there where it's being pushed out over time but it's gonna last a long time a lot better than the house definitely well, the ceiling is finally finished up buttoned up gotta work on the sides just a little bit debating whether or not I'm gonna put some wood or drywall over that and I think I'll do wood because I think I have enough just for that left over and if I use wood then I can get back to some of the wiring I need to get to later which is another point is that sometimes I like to get footage or pictures of the little details behind the wall so later when I come back and modify something or change something I have something to reference and is right when I put the wall up I and cover up all the wires I forget what I did and um, I'm just trying to keep a documentation of what I have I'm laying this out for lighting later and then I have another wire coming up from this outlet down there to come up for another outlet and for a light or switch or something for whatever I want up there and then same here so I have this light switch that I had planned for just when you open this door. Got a little light that you can turn on. And then I also debated back and forth of just making this an outlet. Because we're going to have bunks here. You could use this as an outlet and then just continue the light switch up, up there or something. I don't know. 
And then similar thing over here is that I have a, a light hanging out here. Um, that's just going to go for the a uh, kitchen light or a fan or something like that. And that'll be the probably a plug there for the kitchen stuff. And then the light itself will have a switch for the light up there. And then um, back here, similar, have some a power line coming out for a light switch for this bathroom area and also a fan so I need to bring in that power to that. You just gotta remember how I wired that. This little junction box there. Two junction boxes.